Hello, I'm Dr. Edward, the Healing Vet, and today I'm going to teach you a whole lot about how you can help your beautiful pets if they have anxiety or any kind of post-traumatic stress. So I see a stack of animals with post-traumatic stress issues. It's very common and it seems to be, I don't know, a lot, lot, lot more common in um, domestic animals than wild animals, which is kind of curious. So anxiety and trauma, I'm, I work in a vet clinic two days a week and I've been working as a holistic vet for 25 years and I have seen more animals with anxiety and post-traumatic stress than I can count. Really, really, really large, large numbers of these animals have significant issues in terms of anxiety and stress. Now, the standard veterinary medical sort of treatment model of these problems is to give prescription medications like fluoxetine, trazodone, gabapentin, and while they can deal with some of the symptoms, I don't believe these medications get to the root cause of the problem and actually heal the root cause of the problem. And hello to all of you there who are watching. Um, please do say hi in the chats. I'd love to hear who you are and where you're from. It's always lovely to hear where everyone's checking in from and what animals you have. So healing anxiety and trauma in pets can be easier than you think. But if you're going to heal a problem, you need to understand what it is about the problem, how it develops, and what the mechanics are in terms of how it impacts the body when, the, um, when it's caused and when you've got an ongoing problem. So trauma gets patterned or embedded or stuck in the body-mind system of your animal. And all trauma is experienced by the whole being, right? If there's a physical accident, it's not just the sense of feeling or pain that is affected. It's, it's the, what sounds were present when the event happened, what um, smells and tastes were going on. And another really important one, which I call the sixth sense, is cognition. The thinking, feeling, mental, emotional processes, the internal processes of consciousness that the animal is experiencing when the trauma happens and also then later on when that trauma gets re-triggered when the, you the animal meets the stimulus that's fearful for them and they go into crazy mode again hi lily from adelaide Liz from boston sandy from sydney welcome and if there's anyone else out there watching please say hi in the chat love to hear from you so the mind the role of the mind, the mental, emotional state and activities of your animal in trauma and in um, anxiety is super important. Now, why is it important? Because before we go into what it does, let's talk a little bit about how trauma affects the body-mind. Hi Maria from Berwick with a very anxious and reactive Kelpie Schnauzer. I hope you can come and see me so I can help your dog in person. Um, message me on the Facebook page or at thehealingvet.com if you do want to. Hi Dawn from Wisconsin. So what happens is that there's a stimulus, right? There's some sort of stimulus that the animal perceives as dangerous or fearful. Now, it might not actually be dangerous or physical in the case of thunder or um, the sound of the vacuum cleaner or whatever it is that freaks these animals out. But the animal believes that it's dangerous, right? And what happens then is that when that stimulus comes into your animal senses, you get a fight-flight response, which is an arousal response. And in your animal's body and mind, there's a whole lot goes on in a really short space of time. This is a very quick change in the physiology and the mental emotional state of the animal. So it's a fear response. And this is a deep survival instinct, you know. In the wild, you need to have healthy fear so that you can avoid dangerous situations and live to pass on your genes or your genetics to, to ongoing generations, right? So the mind kicks into... 
um, high alert too, right? So you get the mental, emotional, the mind goes into hypervigilant state, very alert, the senses become more sensitive or even hypersensitive, you might say. And this is kind of good when you're out in the wild and you need to be alert for danger and escape that danger or fight for your life. But it becomes a problem for our domestic animals when they can't move away from the fight-flight-provoking stimulus, the thing that the animal perceives to be dangerous or fearful for them. So when the animal can't freely move away from what is upsetting them, that is distressing to them, then the fight-flight response gets stronger and keeps getting reinforced and reinforced. And then that's... And from the physical perspective, you get a, a massive release of hormones of um, adrenaline, cortisol, blood flow is diverted from the gut to the muscles, physical tension increases as the animal is ready at a moment's notice to run or fight. Now what would happen in the wild is that the animal would have a fight and either win or be killed or run away and either be caught and eaten or escape. So the animals that have either won the fight or escaped, what they do in the wild is they literally shake themselves off. They get safe and they vigorously shake their body and this seems to do something very important for the animal. Um, they don't, they just seem to go back in, into rest and digest mode. They seem to turn off that fight flight mode and go back to healthy relaxation, which is rest and digest, which is what your animal should be in most of the time. And in general, wild animals don't seem to suffer post-traumatic stress. I think that's because they can move away. So what happens with our animals is they cannot move away. And if, particularly if you've got a, a rescue animal that's been in an abusive situation, they might have been abused by a human being multiple times physically or mentally or emotionally, whether it be actual physical striking animal or mental emotional um, abuse. And... They can't move away. So every time the event happens, it reinforces the mental emotional distress. It reinforces the pattern of tension in the body. So if you get an animal that's been abused, you know, they're going to have this whole body shape that goes with that stimulus, that event, that abuse. So that builds a pattern of tension, a posture that gets locked up in the body. And the mind becomes more and more hypervigilant because then the mind is worrying is worrying about when the next time is going to happen and super sensitive to but they can't escape it as you can see you know this is a really awful awful sort of thing for an animal to have to experience what happens is that you know so you've got an, a healthy animal is going to be living over here somewhere in 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 healthy relaxation right but these these animals that have severe trauma post-traumatic stress their whole system gets reset so that they're actually their resting state is is some level of fight flight and they've lost the ability to regulate back to relaxation they cannot move back to healthy relaxation they're stuck over here and not only are they stuck over here they have a hair trigger to go boom right over here to severe severe absolute panic fight flight arousal when they're faced with that stimulus that they perceive to be fearful or dangerous or that is actually fearful or dangerous or harmful or painful to them. So these pets, these animals are wired, they're hypervigilant, they're tense, they're jumpy, they never switch off. They're often reactive, maybe aggressive. They often carry a lot of soft tissue pain in their body because of the continual tension that they've had the whole time. They can be difficult to train because when the brain is in an arousal state, the front brain, which is your conscious brain that makes decisions and can respond to commands, turns off. Um, they can be destructive sometimes. You know, you go home and the bed exploded, the dog bed exploded everywhere. And they can show many other signs of anxiety or they can become addicted to high impact, high arousal play, like ball play, that sort of thing. Now, I don't believe you can medicate for this anxiety, post-traumatic stress issue and get a full cure. Now, prescription medicines absolutely can help and they can be a lifesaver in some dogs. They are absolutely necessary in some dogs with really severe symptoms. Um, and they can help dogs that are severe in the, in the healing process because it can, you know, take them from 
really severe resting state of anxiety back towards relaxation so that you have a bit more breathing room and more room to work with with the other things I'm about to talk about. But I believe you really need to engage hands-on with skillful body work to really help these animals. Now I've seen beautiful healing from trauma and anxiety using skillful loving touch with the whole energy body balance method which is a healing body work modality that I created for animals over the last 25 odd years of working hands-on with animals. Now we had a staffy come in a couple of years ago who was tearing all the plasterboard off the walls. After two weeks of his humans doing this body work, he was um, no none of that behaviour at all. Gone back pretty much to normal. So relaxed that some days he wasn't even getting off his bed when his mum came home from her shift. Um, and I'll also tell you a story from a student of ours who says that she this is her story so she'd been doing the online training that we have for the whole energy body balance work just for a few weeks she said Jager is a three-year-old mixed breed from Alice Springs who had an extremely tough start to life when he came to me he had a lot of serious medical and behavioral issues also after lots of medical treatment and finally getting on top of his issues, he was then suffering severe anxiety and was in a constant state of arousal, which then triggered more health issues. I tried all the prescription behavioural drugs to no avail. Things were looking hopeless. That's when I saw the healing bed on Facebook and I did the masterclass on silent pain, then the online training. I started working with Jager and discovered he didn't like being touched, but with gentle persistence he came round, then the changes started to happen. Slowly he relaxed, his arousal was less every day. Within a couple of weeks he was constantly 